beside the ring. So the length is just 2 pi r. Okay, it's the length of the ring. Okay. I have my power scaling, as I would expect. I have my material constants down here. But instead of this, this phase matching constraint here, what I have is factors that tell me how strongly the light is enhanced because it spends a lot of time in the ring. And since to good approximation, these resonances are equally spaced, I can, I can, if I have a pump frequency here and choose a signal frequency here, I can have resonance here and here and here. And if each one of these alpha squareds, of which I have one, two, three, four of them, is on the order of a few hundred, I can get a huge enhancement in the ring, in the, in the production of this idler frequency, by using a ring rather than a channel of equal length. Now, of course, the ring, I want to use a small ring, but on the other hand, if I raise a couple of a hundred to sort of four powers, I have a lot of enhancement going for me. There is no magic here, right? These intensities and powers are the powers in the channel. The, the power inside the ring is much larger. That's why this is going gangbusters, right? Because I amplify the power inside the ring. But nonetheless, in a very small structure, uh, I can get a huge amount of generation of a new frequency, omega i. Okay. So that's how a ring helps. That's the classical story. And indeed, this has now been seen uh, in, um, in silicon rings by, uh, by the Lipson group at Cornell and in Hydex rings, that is the material that's used by the company called Infinera that I mentioned before in work that was, uh, that was partly done here, uh, here at Sydney. Okay. So this, this, is, this has been seen and the, the numbers that uh, come out, that came out of the experiment, this one here, the Hydex one, are in very, very good agreement with the theory the result of which I just sketched for you. We actually really did do the calculation. I just gave you a sort of cartoon of the answer. Okay? Okay. All right, now let's look at quantum processes. Okay? What happens if we go into the quantum regime? Now we have something called spontaneous four-wave mixing. Remember, this was the classical process. The quantum process is, looks sort of the same, but you don't put that signal beam in to seed the process. You just put in pump photons. And every once in a while, two of them will convert themselves, one to a photon at a slightly higher frequency, and one to a photon at a slightly, slightly lower frequency. It's a spontaneous process. You cannot describe it classically. In the same way, you cannot, describe it, you cannot describe spontaneous emission classically. It's a kind of nonlinear optics analog of spontaneous emission. Okay? But what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a little story for you and sort of describe it in a sort of half-baked quantum mechanical, half-baked classical way. I, I remind you now that we have actually done the calculations and what I am telling you is just a kind of a cartoon synopsis of the result. But the cartoon synopsis, I think, illustrates the physics and maybe illustrates the physics better than the details of the equation. So what, we, what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, what's really going on here is, is like what's going on here, except instead of sending in this beam at omega s, there's a little quantum fluctuation. There it is, a little quantum fluctuation. That takes the role of this guy here, right? And then out's gonna come the two photons and this guy, so here I've got these two, that's like this, and the little quantum fluctuation. And then we have the idler photon that's coming out, okay? So the idea is the little quantum fluctuation is gonna drive this whole process, okay? That's where the spontaneity of it comes from. Now, how do we build that into the story? Well, let's talk about what happens in a channel first. And let me assume that in the classical limit, I had perfect phase matching, okay? Then in the classical case where I send in a photon at omega s, okay, 
then I get, I get this, because remember, I, there used to be that little phi-squared thing that described the, fa the penalty for not exact phase matching. But I'm going to just, just to make a toy calculation, just imagine everything's phase batched at any frequency. Okay? But in the classical case, I send something in at omega s, so I get something out at omega i. Okay? Now in the quantum case, well, we have a little fluctuation. Okay? And that little fluctuation, well, that it could, could occur at this omega s, but yeah, it could also occur at this omega s. And if it occurred at this omega s, I get some omega i out over here. Okay? So in the spontaneous case, I'm going to get a whole bunch of frequencies coming out, a whole bunch of pairs of, of photons, all centered, of course, at omega p, because I have to have energy conservation in both cases. What happens? Well, if you calculate the amount of power I get at, let's say, the idler, and this is, uh, is you know, approximately equal because you know, there's idler photons coming out everywhere here, okay? But if you make, if you make a few rough approximations, if you take the exact calculation, make a few approximations, you can put it in this form. And you can see here, well, you know, much is the same as in the classical case. Okay? Of course, there's no input power at the signal frequency. Instead, I'm relying on a quantum fluctuation. So what power would I associate with the quantum fluctuation? Well, power is energy over time. Well, the energy would sort of be like h bar omega, where omega is one of the frequencies around here. Okay? And what's the time? Well, the only time that's really in, left in the problem now is the optical period, right? So, and the four-thirds, I have no simple explanation for why it's four-thirds instead of some other number. It's because of various approximations we made when we, you know, took into account the fact there's many frequencies coming out. But you get the idea, right? The idea is that the power of that quantum fluctuation, which is driving this, is about a photon energy divided by a natural frequency. And it's divided by, by, a by the period of, 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 the optical, of the optical fields. And that's the thing that's important because there's no other time scale in the problem. It has to be that. And as I say, if you actually make the calculation, bash it around a bit, you can push it into this result. But we did not make the calculation with little fuzzy, you know, sort of quantum blurbs. We used raising and lowering operators, and we did it all correctly. Okay. Now what happens in the ring? Remember, here's the, here's the classical case again. Okay? And again, I'm going to assume perfect phase matching. Uh, one can generalize it. So I'm going to assume I have everything's, all these things are at the peaks of their alphas and so on. Okay? And that's the expression we got. Those six powers of, or sorry, eight powers of alpha here. Uh, the alpha fourth is the pump and the alpha with the omega i and the alpha with the omega signal. Okay. What happens in the quantum regime? Well, now we're relying, if I want to calculate the power that comes out at i, of course there'll be some power coming out at s too, but the power coming out at i, well, what do I get? Again, look, much is the same. Okay. Same material constant, same powers of alpha, same L, L squared. Now something again has to take the role of that signal power. And what's it going to be? Well, in this case, the numbers come out more nicely. H bar omega over 2, half a photon, fluctuating power, fluctuating energy. That's maybe right. Here's the time that's involved. Now, the time that's involved, L over V, that would be, if there were no enhancement in anything, that would just be the travel time around the ring. But it's enhanced because I'm at a resonance, so this light can spend a much longer time in the ring than it otherwise could. So I pay a little bit of a penalty there because of that long time. But nonetheless, I still have six powers of alpha here left over, which will give me a large enhancement. Okay? L over V here is typically on the order of 100. Okay? So if you 
100 periods, okay? So if you compare this